Hello, I'm Ollie, and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror is another instalment in my ongoing library tour. So, what I've plucked down from the attic for you uh, today, for your delight and delectation, is a box of horror books. Um, so, these are all ones that I've read before. Um, so I will pluck them out and go through them and talk about them, because <laughs> that's what you do in these videos. Um, so first up, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, um, an absolute classic. I, I think I got this, this is like an ex-library edition, and it's, it's a large print one. It's not, I actually read it on my Kindle, but I think when I found this, like, for 10p or something, um, I thought I'd buy it. But to be honest with you, I find it a bit weird. <laughs> I like larger printed books, but not that large. Um, I think I might find that a bit disconcerting to read, but a, a classic ghost story anyway, as I'm sure you know, um, about a group of people, one of whom is like a, a psychologist who go to this supposedly haunted house to conduct experiments and stuff. Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic and a great, great central character um, in Eleanor. Um, another classic ghost story, uh, so The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. Um, I've not read that much Susan Hill, um, and I probably ought to read more because this is brilliant. But obviously this is her best known book. Um, and rightly so, it's creepy as hell. Um, so about a young guy who gets um, hired to go and um, work in this mansion on the moors. Um, I think he's like cataloguing stuff there. He's a solicitor. Yeah, he's, he's cataloguing stuff up there. Um, and it's haunted by this woman in black. Um, but it's very, very effectively done. Not a long book, as you can see, but she, she really... Um, manages to wring as much tension and fear out of it, uh, out of the, the words she uses as she possibly could have. Um, okay, something completely different. Um, so things have gotten worse since we last spoke by Eric LaRocca, which was a bit of a, a darling on Booktube um, a little while ago, I think. I think probably shortly before I started on Booktube. So you see a lot of older videos about this. So I thought this was okay. Um, I certainly begrudged paying whatever I paid for it, like a tenner for a hundred page book when I when I read it and didn't think it was that great. I kind of get why there was such a buzz about it. I do think it's an interesting concept and I think the way it's written is interesting as well. So if you don't know it, it's about um, a strange kind of sadomasochistic relationship between these two women um, that's, that's all pretty much all conducted via like online conversations um, with one of them um, like dominating the other and encouraging her to do increasingly extreme things. Um, so it's, it, you know, it's an interesting topic, probably quite a topical topic. Um, but yeah, I, it just didn't, this sounds awful in a way, but it, I just felt like it didn't go far enough. It, it, it felt like it was the beginning of a longer book rather than a book in its own right. Um, I felt a bit let down at the end of it. Um, but it's an interesting book and I'm certainly glad I read it. Um, and I'd be keen to read more by him. Um, but yeah, this one, I didn't think it deserved the hype that it got. Uh, right, up next, The Gorge by A.J. Leehart. So this is a British horror novel that I got sent for a review a few years ago, set in um, the north of England, if I remember rightly. Um, I do not remember a great deal about it, but I remember thinking it was pretty good. Um, I think it's about a, a small town. Um, yeah, let me read you the back. So Dartley, um, a remote village on the east coast of England, is gradually falling into the North Sea. With its caves and windswept beaches, it struggles to survive as the birth rates fall and the population breeds itself out of existence. But for Sam and Jackie, Dartley is a lifeline, a chance to rebuild their lives after Sam's experiences at war in Afghanistan. A chance for Jackie to have her baby and for them to bring their child up in peace. But what lurks in the caves and on the cliffs of Dartley? Who controls the slaughterhouse above the Red, Red River which cuts through the sands and trickles into the sea? And what of the people who run Dartley got planned for Sam and Jackie? Yeah, I remember it a bit more now. So yeah, it's about this, this couple of outsiders who moved to this town, which is a very creepy place. And there's clearly some very weird and fucked up stuff going on. And, and it gradually gets revealed as, as the book unravels. Um, but yeah, it was it was a pretty good one, I have to say. Um, right, I'm going to grab a stack and see what we get. Ah, right, so I was looking for this the other day. So this is my nice vintage Corgi edition of I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. Uh, one of the greatest horror novels ever written. And isn't that a fantastic cover? 
I know Michael K. Vaughan's got his snazzy new, um, what they called Folio Society edition, which is gorgeous, I have to say, but give me a bat and I'll pay for it like that any day. This is fantastic and such a good book. So it's about the last man on earth um, battling vampires. So he just kind of stays asleep during the day, goes, at, no, the other way around, <laughs> sleeps at night, goes out during the day. So, you know, 40, has a, a little fortified house he stays in at night and he goes out during the day and slays vampires. Um, really bleak and gripping stuff. Fantastic. Um, somewhat less bleak uh, and fantastic. TikTok by uh, Dean Coont, written obviously before the popular Chinese social media um, company took over the world. Um, I seem to remember this was quite a, quite a fun one. This is one of his more recent ones, I think. And I seem to remember it's almost a bit slapsticky, if it's the one I'm thinking of. I can't remember exactly what it's about, but I do remember thinking it was quite fun. Um, I think I, I find Coont really hit, hit or miss. Some of his stuff I really quite like. Some of it not so much, but I think this was a, a better one. Um, here's another one. I can't remember much about this one either. Darkness Comes. Um, let me read the back. This one doesn't have anything on the back. It's just got him with his dodgy tash. Um, so, who is more foolish, the child afraid of the dark or a man afraid of the light? Bubba Lavelle is a stranger in New York, a stranger with a mission to break the mafia stronghold of the city's drug trade and to take it over for himself. He has no guns, no army of hoods, no friends in high places, but he has the power. A magical, ancient and ter uh, magical, ancient and terrifyingly brutal. The power that thrives in darkness. Is this the... I'm trying to remember if this is the one where he's got control of these little sort of gremlin characters and he uses those to, to, um, to kill the mafia. I, I think that's this one, in, in which case it is really good fun. Uh, next up, Vivia by Tanith Lee. Um, someone was saying they were reading a Tanith Lee book on Booktube the other day, and I can't remember who it was now. This is the only book of hers that I've read. So she's a British kind of fantasy and horror author um, who was quite big in like the kind of 70s and 80s. Um, this was really good. This is a vampire story. It's very dark, very kind of gothic-y. It's set, I can't remember when it's set, but uh, long in the past. Um, and has got lots of slightly dubious sexual content as well, from what I remember. Um, but it's really atmospheric, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, I have to say. Um, yeah, it was a four-star read for me. I, uh, I need to read more by her, but yeah, that was a very entertaining one. Right, let's grab a few more. We're doing all right in this box. Uh, right, um, Boy's Life by uh, Robert McCammon. So this is a, um, what is one of those, so the first thing I should say, I really liked it. Um, before slagging it off a bit. So it's one of those books that um, particularly I find white male horror writers seem to write when they get to a certain age where they they are very nostalgic about the past um, and overlook all the things that were wrong in the past um, and paint it you know in, in very rosy colours. So this one I think is set in the 50s um, in this small town um, and about there's weird goings on in the town basically. Um, and about this young boy and his, his kind of coming of age um, and him trying to battle the, the, the darkness in the town. Um, it's one of those books that's got hardly any female characters in it at all. It's an incredibly male book. Um, and there are some really good male characters in it. There is one female character, a wise black woman who lives in the town, um, who can cure people and stuff like that. Um, but she's the only female character of any note at all. Apart from that, I think you've got the boy's mother, um, who's just a a completely a mum character um, and this girl at school who's uh, kind of a bit annoying and that's it all the other characters of any note are men um, and I've, I found that a little bit uh, a, a little bit annoying and also the fact that you know there's a, there's a bit of touching on on race and racism in the book um, but not nearly a, you know his his portrayal of 50s America is, is a lot rosier than than it might have been shall we say um, but it is an entertaining book. It's very entertaining. It's it's quite, um, you know, it's sweetly nostalgic at times, um, quite spooky at times, very exciting at times. Um, so yeah, I did enjoy that one. Uh, next up, another period vampire novel, Supping with Panthers by Tom Holland, which sort of takes the vampire law and mixes it in with uh, kind of British imperialism. So you've got kind of vampires in, in the British Raj and things like that. Um, it's a, it's a, and it's kind of a, a bit of a classic adventure story as well. So, yeah, quite entertaining, um, quite long. I seem to remember. Yeah, it's kind of five hundred pages, um, but it was a it was a good, exciting read. 
Um, another British horror one here, so Sheep by Simon McGinn, McGinn um, which is a really creepy book about, I think it's set in Wales. Um, yeah, I, I can't quite remember what it was about, but I remember it was creepy as hell. Um, and features, I know it features lots of scenes of like huge numbers of animals getting slaughtered and things like that. Um, yeah, quite a disturbing book from what I remember. Well, speaking of disturbing, I can't get it out of the box now. Through the Woods uh, by Emily Carroll, which is a kind of retelling of, of fairy stories, that, that, kind of, that kind of book, um, but wonderfully illustrated and incredibly creepy, like really, really creepy, um, like beautiful illustrations and a fantastically enjoyable series of horror stories. I think there's five or six stories in here, but it is properly creepy. I know someone um, who I've known for a long time through kind of Twitter, um, who when she saw I was reading it, commented that after she read it, she actually had to put her copy of it out of sight. So it didn't trigger her <laughs> when she saw it because some of the stories of it are so creepy. So yeah, that's, that's a good one. Right, we've got a couple of Sean Hudson's next. So I've talked about Hudson on the channel before. Um, so Heathen uh, and Hell to Pay. I do not remember much about either of these books. So I will read the blurbs to you quickly. Um, so Robotons relationship with record company boss David is rife with deceit and deception. Uh, and the only thing that holds them together is their daughter, Kirsten. And though Kirsten may seem like any other child, she suffers from an extraordinary illness, one that without her medication can unleash a bizarre and deadly trail of horror. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I don't remember much about that one, but it's Sean Hudson, so it's going to be pretty good. Um, and he then, um, Donna Ward was shattered when her husband was killed in a car crash, devastated to learn that another woman had been with him and disbelieving when the police informed her that the crash had been no accident. How could her beloved Chris, a best-selling author, have any enemies? How long had he had a mistress? And who are the mysterious men in the photographs she finds? Suddenly, Donna has to face up to the fact that she knows less about her husband than she thought. Um, I do not remember much about this one, but I'm fairly sure from the from the cover it's got a supernatural element. It does it sound from the back like it might be a straight mystery, but I'm fairly sure it's not. Um, right, nearly done. We've got about eight books left. Um, so first up, A Ring by Koji, Koji Suzuki, um, which obviously is very well known from the um, from the film of the same name. I thought the book was excellent. Um, it is um, creepy um, in a way I didn't expect it to be. So I, I given that it's about a like, haunted videotape, which is what it's about, so a videotape that if you watch it, you get cursed. So the film works enormously effectively because of the fact you actually watch the videotape. So you feel like you've been cursed. Well, clearly in the book that doesn't happen, but it's still very, very effective. Um, another one that was famously filmed, Let the Right One In by John uh, Vide Lindquist, um, which is an excellent, excellent vampire book. Um, I love this book. It's got some um, quite troubling content in it, but it's really, really good. Um, I really like it. So about a young boy who, who meets a vampire. Next up, a novelisation, The Thing uh, by Alan Dean Foster, king of the horror and sci-fi movie novelisations. This is in very good condition, this one. It looks like it may never have been read. I, ha I, I have read it, although not this copy. I read it when I was a teenager. I'm a huge fan of The Thing as a movie. I think it's my favourite John Carpenter movie and, and one of my favourite horror movies of all time. Um, that's another one I watched, um, one I watched with my son not that long ago, and he was amazed by the special effects in it. They still really stand up, and they are, because they are like practical effects, they've got a, a physicality to them that you just, it, I think, is still impossible to create with uh, with CGI effects. Um, so, yeah, you, you know the story of the thing. I can't remember if the novelisation was particularly good, but Alan Dean Foster normally does a good job. Okay, next up, All My Colours by David Quantic. I love the cover of this book. I think it's brilliant. So this is about a, um, if I remember rightly, it's about an author who um, discovers that a famous book he has read and, and has read many, many times, nobody in the world remembers anymore. So he rewrites it. So he's like a struggling author who can't get a break. Um, and he realises no one apart from him can remember this book. So he rewrites it and, and gets successful as a result. Um, it's really good. 
um, it's, it, I really enjoyed it. It's quite trippy, um, but yeah, fantastic. Um, David Quantic is best known for his TV writing. So he wrote, um, it says here on the cover, The, the Thick of It, um, which is, I think, the UK version. And I think in the States they remade it as Veep. So he's very funny as well. And this is a very funny book as well as being quite creepy. Um, another one next that needs no introduction. So Tales of Mystery and, and Imagination by Edgar Allan Poe. So I have this lovely old um, pan edition. I don't know when this is from. 1962. Uh, and it was originally owned by Janet Jones uh, from Six Windmill Field in Ware, which is not that far away from where I grew up, actually, Ware. So maybe that's maybe I bought this as a teenager. Um, it's got a nice still on the back there from one of the uh, Roger Corman Poe adaptations. I'm not sure which one. Oh, Full of House of Usher, it says. Um, so, yeah, Poe, you know, you've got to have a bit of Poe, haven't you? Um, I don't know if Michael K. Vaughan has this edition, but I know he has many, many Poe editions. Um, right, next up, a bit of Richard Lehman. Um, I don't know why this is in the I've Read box rather than in my I've... Oh, it's because I've got two copies of it. So I've definitely read this, um, but years and years and years ago, so I don't remember it. So I've also got a copy on my shelf there, because obviously I've got two copies of Richard Lehman. Um, yeah, I don't remember what it's about, so I'll read the back. Um, high school prankster Tony Johnson has a weird idea of fun. He likes frightening the life out of people. When he kidnaps school beauty Linda Allison and locks her in a haunted house for the night, that's his idea of a joke. But Linda doesn't see the funny side. Now Tony has moved to Hollywood, determined to break into horror movies. His target is special effects queen Danny Larson. Um, uh, he's willing to go to any lengths to impress her. By now he's forgotten about Linda, but she's a girl with vengeance in her heart and she certainly hasn't forgotten him. So it's it's layman, so, you know, who knows what it will be like, but it's it's not too long. It's under 300 pages, so I may give up one a go soon. OK, so next up, we've just got two to go. So The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, which is fantastic. Um, I slightly preferred his book, My Heart is a Chainsaw, uh, but this is really good as well. But it's told in a really weird way. Um, which I think some readers have struggled with. It, it jumps about a fair bit um, and there are quite abrupt kind of endings to, to the sections of the book, um, but it is fantastic. Um, so about um, Native Americans, Indigenous Americans um, and um, kind of all sorts of weird stuff that happens to them, some of which is connected um, to kind of uh, Native American law um, and you know myths and things like that but some of which isn't and, uh, I thought it was brilliant um, a fantastic book um, and then finally uh, The Searching Dead by Rams Campbell so the first of his um, trilogy The Three Births of Daolath uh, of which I have the second two books of I've got one of them there and the other one must be in the attic as well um, I like this so it's about a well, let me read you the blurb um, 1952, on a school trip to France, teenager Dominic Sheldrake begins to suspect one of his teachers has reasons to be there as secret as they are strange when Dominic finds him performing a bizarre ritual in a moonlit field. Meanwhile, a widowed neighbour joins a new church that puts people in touch with their dead re relatives. Unfortunately, once they come back, they're frighteningly different and very hard to remove. Um, so, yeah, this was really creepy. And it's got, like A Boy's Life, it's got that kind of nice nostalgia thing. Um, this one set, I think, in Liverpool rather than uh, rather than the States, that being where Ramsey Campbell uh, hails from. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this, and I do need to get to the to the next two. It's it it's one of those books that feels like the start of something. It it builds up and builds up, and the end, you know, really did leave me wanting more. So I will definitely read the the second two books soon. So, hope you enjoyed that as always. Another trawl through some of my horror books. Um, there's definitely some more boxes of horror up there. Um, so, there will be more like these, as well as boxes of other genres. Um, so, stay tuned for those. Um, but in the meantime, hope you're all safe and well, and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheerio.